Well, thanks a lot for staying with us here on Sunrise Live on E as we continue with the conversations this morning. We are going to be looking at entrepreneurship, how to turn your business around. We've been having a series of those kinds of conversations and really in the hope to inspire you as well as to motivate you as an entrepreneur. Now, the founder of uh, Power by Profits and serial entrepreneur, Kuba Smith, is back in the country after being successful overseas in his own business investments and is here to share wisdom on growing South African businesses as well as being able to open our minds up to the available potential as well as investment opportunities. Of course, they joins us in studio this morning and you can be part of our conversation. Give us a call on 011-447-1742, alternatively 2570. Remember, we're also available on Facebook as well as Twitter. Kuebis, welcome back home. I think we should start there. Welcome home. Thank you very much, Faith. Now, it's a very interesting uh, uh, scenario when you've got when it comes to your business in itself. I mean, and, and just to highlight some of the, the potential that you hold within the recession in itself. So we've been going through about a 10 year recession within that recession. You've managed to actually assist businesses make 50 percent over or increase by 50 percent within uncertain economic and political climates. Yes. In 20, 2008, I emigrated to the UK yeah. and that was Amidst, amidst the financial crisis. And for the last 19 years, I've been able to turn businesses around and help them to increase profits by 50% year on year. Yeah. All different businesses, but they achieved the 50%. The first one I did increase from a three million pound turnover to a 14 million pound turnover in 12 months. And the profit went from- In 12 months? In 12 months. Okay. And the profit went from nine, 93,000 pound to 1.716 million which is a 5,096% increase in 12 months. And okay. that's what I've been doing for the last 10 years, and that's my passion. Well, speaking about that passion, now a lot of, uh, in this country, I've got about 650,000 small businesses, right? So, well, and, and they obviously employ millions and millions of people that are trying to find their ways to employment. When we're looking at the growth of small businesses in South Africa, where is also what brings into the country in terms of being able to upscale these businesses, where have you identified potential and where are we going wrong? Um, any business in any country in the world, mm. the first year is the most critical. And a lot of the people say to you that no business can make money in the first year. And I think that is the wrong attitude. Mm. In the first year, you can make money. How? Take a salary, but take a small salary. A lot of people want to take a big salary. If you go out there, the most important thing in business is relational capital. I spend most of my time building relationships with other people. Mm. I go into businesses and then I start connecting my businesses, the people I know. If I know you can help somebody else, I take that person, I link you up together and you can it's do business It's almost like relational together. equity, which is why the saying goes, people don't invest in business plans. And perhaps this is also where we're having a conversation about the relevance of business plans in 2017. People don't necessarily invest in business plans as much as they do invest in people. Exactly. Yeah. They don't look at business plans. They think they've got an idea, and this is the biggest problem. Mm. You've got an idea to start a business, and there we go, we start the business. But the most important in starting a business is to have an exit strategy. You need to know how much do you want to make every single year? What profit do you want to make? Otherwise, how can you steer yourself? If you say to yourself, oh, I want to be a millionaire, but mm. you don't know how many millions you want to make, how, you know, how do you know if you're on track? How many millions do you want to make? Mm. But if you have a fixed figure every single year that that's what you want to make, you can measure it. And if you can't measure anything, you can't track it. Yeah. And well, that if you is can't measure it, you can't even achieve it. Because exactly. It's, it's all How do you manage it? How do you manage it if yeah. you can't measure it? Because that's what management is. You measure something to see whether you're on track. Mm. Well, you're working a lot uh, with uh, some of the developments in terms of the businesses that are in that are in the country currently, and you've got a very interesting tagline. I'm going to read you the tagline right here. It says, uh, "Performance-based outcome. If you don't profit, you don't pay." And obviously, this goes within the incubation period, and as well as uh, how is it that you come in to assist them? Because there's an equity that that is expected from the businesses that you assist. But if they don't make a profit, they don't pay. Yeah. I'm I think I'm very confident that we can help businesses because I do a very, very good analysis up front to mm. see whether we could. What we do is I do an analysis for a business and we then look at, can I help the person or are they on track what they want to achieve? Yeah. If they're on track, I walk away. If they're not on track, I can tell to them, this is how we can help you. And me and my team will come in and help them turning the business around or just increasing their growth. Because quite often people in a business, um, you heard it so many times, they say, 
You must think outside of the box. Mm. Look from the outside into your company. Involved, being emotionally involved in that business is very, very difficult because people see their business as their baby. Yeah. And that's the biggest problem. They become emotional. And you can't run a business being emotional. You have to run it by the numbers. You know, it's so funny that you mentioned that because it's a, a lot of the times it's a debate amongst uh, those who are female entrepreneurs as well. So the, the, the growth of female entrepreneurship in the country is seeing how sometimes it becomes stagnant because women feel as though they don't know exactly where to access those opportunities where they will be treated as equals, but also how they will not be seen as emotional beings. <laughs> That's a challenge. Mm -hmm. That is a challenge all over the world. Um, yes. Women all over the world are coming up more and more than the men. Yeah. Um, I think they, after having children, they are still they tr they don't treat their businesses as babies. That's usually the men, because it was his idea. That's what he relates to. Mm. But uh, women goes and they get to a point in their life where they make the distinction between emotional with regards to your children or. Do you just go and get it done for a business because you want to provide to your children? Yeah. And I think quite often what you find is that the woman has a stronger why of why they're doing something, mm. while the males are more interested in how and what do I need to do to do it. And if you've got the why, you will do whatever it takes to achieve those results. But as I said earlier, the most important thing is Get that exit strategy in place first. Know Get exactly what you want to do, yeah. how long you're going to run this business. Do you want it to become a family business? Do you want it to run for your children? And even if that's the case and you have a 10, 15, 20 year plan, it's make sure that there's every year something that you can measure it again. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm Do you think that South Africans are not taking advantage of uh, some of the, the problem-solving opportunities? Because uh, ultimately entrepreneurship is about being able to identify a problem and being able to find a solution to the problem. Are we not taking advantage or are we so closed to the available opportunities to actually solve problems within our country? And this is coming from a South African who immigrated and now is looking from yes. the outside in. That goes again. Internationally, it's the same issue. Yeah. Um, I think what happened is, if you really want to be successful in your business, you need to go and look at your complaints department. If you want to turn around a business, first place to start is a complaints department. Mm. Because that's where they tell you, look at Uber. Uber went and they didn't know who your driver is in the normal taxi industry. Everything like that. So they went and they found. You have an estimate how much is going to cost you. You don't have to carry cash. They solved the problems. Entrepreneurship is about solving problems. Yeah. But at the same time, a good entrepreneur creates the opportunity that, requires the, that requires the solution. And then he can come up with the solution. All right, so um, if I'm an entrepreneur and I'm listening to the show right now, I'm thinking, shucks, my business needs a turnaround strategy and I need help, otherwise I'm in a sunken state. How do I get a hold of you? Um, I think the easiest is I'm on Facebook okay. as Quibus Smith. There's also Powered by Profit. But my email address, they can email me directly okay. and I will, my team will filter through it. It's Quibus, K O B U S, at Powered by Profits. Okay. Com. Poweredbyprofits.com. And you can actually see the website at the bottom of your screen um, as uh, we articulating that uh, this morning. If you are an entrepreneur, if you've got a business that needs a turnaround strategy, Quibba says, you don't profit. If you don't profit, you don't pay. So you get to basically put his money where his mouth is uh, this morning as uh, he assists more and more entrepreneurs. Quibba, thanks a lot for joining us uh, this morning. And all the best with your endeavors. Hopefully, a lot of entrepreneurs will be seeking help from you in terms of upscaling their businesses. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I just want to mention that since Friday, we've got a very brand new entrepreneur on board who's just signed a 7 billion rand deal here in South Africa. Mm. And it shows you that there are opportunities. For the last eight weeks that I've come in back and yeah. through, back and forth to South Africa and the UK, I've actually created more revenue in South Africa than what I did in the UK for the past two years. And there we go. And, and entrepreneurs need to be able to solicit that. This is eight weeks in South Africa. Well, we're going to definitely uh, be able to get more help from entrepreneurs this morning. Speaking to serial entrepreneur Gover Smith about the matter.